in order to keep the machines alive, Yvette had to make a deal with the devil. Her mother felt like, well, if we don't talk about it, then we'll forget about it and it'll go away. But little Yvette did not forget about it. This was it. Like, she was so proud of herself. She was about to finally get all of her babies back. Unfortunately, there was so much blood, we couldn't even save her hair. And this time, it got bad really fast. They felt relieved knowing that Jamie will never hurt somebody else again. So they thought. But there's more to that story. What's up, Team Jazzy? It's your girl, Jazzy J, and I am back with another mukbang. So today's true crime case is about a woman whose biggest fear became her reality. A woman whose biggest fear was someone hurting her baby sister. She also had a fear of clowns, and the last face that she saw before she was brutally murdered was a man with tattoos on his face as a clown. This is the case of Yvette Pena. And for today's mukbang, we have some chipotle. So I have vegan chicken, it's still vegan. I, I use the Darling, Darlin brand. And I made a shorts to it, so make sure you guys check that out. I got some lime chips. I got cilantro jasmine rice. Darling chicken, pico de gala, roasted corn, and black beans. This is everything that I get on my chipotle. I also got a little cup of guacamole. And I got my homemade Sprite, which is just soda water with lemon and lime. Lots of lime, very little lemon. So yeah, I'm excited to eat. I'm so hungry. I've been waiting to do this for a minute. And I, I think I wanna just mix it all up. I just wanted it to be cute for y'all for the presentation, but I think I need to mix this up. This chicken, it was so good. Okay, this is looking amazing. I think I'm gonna have to take another picture. So I do have to say this true crime case is the saddest case that I have ever done. It's like really heartbreaking. Um, I cried when I was writing out everything and doing research for you guys. And I do have to say, release and dump, you know, these situations are very sad, especially because it's true. And there's cruel people out here that don't even, even think about everybody else that they're hurting besides the person that is getting their life taken. Growing up, it was only baby Yvette and her mother. And um, all the way up until Yvette was 10 years old, when her mother gifted her with a baby sister. Yes, I said gifted. Because this baby was for Yvette. Like Yvette just adored her. This baby was her whole life. And unfortunately, about two months after the baby was born, she had to be hospitalized. And she had to have these very expensive machines just to keep her alive. And she was about to die. But thank God the mother's boyfriend has a lot of money. So he was able to provide these machines for Yvette's baby sister so that she can stay alive. What a blessing, right? To have a man like that. So they thought. In order to keep the machines alive, Yvette had to make a deal with the devil. And it was costing Yvette's innocence. At 10 years old, this man, her mother's boyfriend, was molesting her in exchange to keep these machines alive. He would tell her, if you don't do this, I'm gonna leave your mom and she's not gonna be able to afford these machines and then your baby sister will die. And if you tell your mom, then I'm gonna do it to your little sister. So at 10 years old, here Yvette is making a sacrifice to protect her baby sister. 
And as far as her mother, their mother had a capacity of a nine-year-old. And all she did was work all day and night at the bar. So Yvette was basically the mother figure who was cleaning the house and cooking for her baby sister and making sure she was clean, safe, and happy. She even got a little job to purchase toys for her baby sister. Um, She was literally her mom at 10 years old. Until about two years later, she decided to tell her mother what was going on. She couldn't take it anymore. And her mother called the police on the boyfriend. So they did a rape kit on both of the children, both of the young girls, and little Yvette got the most disturbing, shocking news that would change her life forever. She found out that her mom's boyfriend was also molesting her baby sister, but she went through all of that just to protect her. Yvette lost herself. She lost herself within that news. She was so upset and distraught. And just imagine, you know, a 12-year-old's brain is not even fully developed yet. And all this trauma, they have all this trauma, feeling worthless after you've given up so much of yourself. You know, what was done to her was trauma enough. And then you have to find out that it was done to your sister. And that was the reason why you were even allowing it because you thought that it won't be done to your sister. And her mother felt like, well... If we don't talk about it, then we'll forget about it and it'll go away. But little Yvette did not forget about it. And she started self-medicating. She resented her mother. She started lashing out at her, accusing her of knowing that her and her baby sister was getting molested. She said, there's no way you didn't know this man was doing this to me every single day. There's no possible way you didn't know. And it caused a lot of family feud. And by the time Yvette was 16 years old, she had her first baby. It was a boy. She loved being a mother. She just wanted someone to love her through her trauma. And she felt like she found that through her son. But she found out that having a baby that loved her still wasn't enough to distract her from the pain and the failure that she felt like. So she continued to self-meditate and the drugs became more powerful. And by 2004, she was doing meth. So the drugs completely took her over and she had about four kids by this time and every single one got taken from her. Every time they took a baby away from her, Her drug abuse became worse. Her pain became worse. And she just felt like being a mother completed her. She felt worthless every time they took a baby. And it just made her worse. She was convinced that a baby would save her. She ended up in jail for possession of drugs and she caught her sister who's now an adult and she she told her sister please come and bail me out of jail because I'm pregnant again and they're going to take my baby from me if I have this baby in jail so They bail her out and she already knew she was going to be red flagged soon as she got, soon as she went to deliver the baby. The baby came premature. She got into programs and she did everything possible to get her baby back. She had been clean for months. Every day she was walking to the hospital to see her baby. The county even dropped all of her drug charges. Like this was it. Like she was so proud of herself. She was about to finally get all of her babies back. She missed one appointment and they called her and said, no, we're done. You're not getting your kids back. And that just completely took her backwards. She felt like a failure yet again. 
And this time, it got bad really fast. One week after Halloween, a random woman called the police on her estranged husband. Sheriff's sure, Office. Hi, I called maybe like three or four hours ago regarding my um, estranged husband breaking a restraining order. Okay. I was just wondering if anyone was on their way or... Yes, ma'am. It looks like your call should be the next call up for service. Uh, he's threatening to, to kill me. I don't care if I... 911, if you have a severe emergency. He's threatening to kill me and all my children. Do you know where he's at right now? No, no. I'm terrified. I don't know what to do. 911, where is your emergency? Yeah, I'll just, I have a little baby here. What's his name? Jamie Osuna. There's already a warrant for his arrest. For terror. He's, he's been telling me that. Okay. He's not there, right? He's, he's, he's driving up and down my street. I told you three times. Okay, and he's on the phone again making threats to kill you? Yes. He says, I will put work in your head. So I'm going to do that work. 911, how can I help you? Yes, hi, ma'am. Um, is there any way we can get an officer out here? My aunt is, like, terrified. She's crying over here. The, okay. We I, got voice recorded. He just called, and he's, I mean, I'm, I'm just a nephew. He's just do this. No joke. So We're going to be out there as soon as we can. However, we don't have a deputy available right now. By the time the police got there, her husband was gone. Then she called the police again. Was there anybody hurt or stabbed at the Morocco Hotel on Union? Nothing? Um, because he said he did it. He said I don't know what... There's a woman in the Morocco Hotel on Union. I just spoke with the Bakersfield Police Department, and they did not familiar with anything that occurred last night. So they're still checking, oh, but, okay. but as far as I know, um, you know, we have not been able to locate anything. So, okay. okay. I just wanted to make sure. I hope there wasn't someone, you know, suffering because he's really psycho. Five days later... 911 operators gets this phone call. Hello, I am calling from the El Morocco Motel. Uh -huh. And uh, I find there's a lady that stayed here at the motel, and my cleanup guy went in the room and saw her all stabbed in the back. She's what? dead, I think. Oh my gosh, what, what was it, sir? It's room number 19 at the El Morocco Motel. On Sunday, November 13th at 9 p.m., Yvette's sister gets a knock on her door and they told her that they found her sister Yvette dead at the Morocco Motel. But her sister felt like it doesn't matter who murdered her because she lost her life way before she even got murdered. She lost her life when her innocence was taken from her as a child. And now her sister resented her mother and the police asked them do you guys know anybody that has tattoos on their face like a clown and Yvette's little sister said no but she was afraid of clowns and the police said well unfortunately the person that murdered her has tattoos on his face like a clown so the funeral home said Due to the severity of her remains, she's going to have to get cremated. Then they realized her body was so decomposed, they couldn't even take her to the funeral home. They needed to take her directly to be cremated. And the sister was like, can I just please have a piece of her hair, something? And they was like, okay, we're going we're gonna to try and they came back and they was like, unfortunately, there was so much blood. We couldn't even save her hair. The autopsy was unclear and awful. Her killer's name is Jamie Osuna. And it took six years to go to trial. And the defense attorney talked about how bad of a mother she was. They found out she was sexually assaulted. And so the defense attorney was like, but it was consensual. They had consensual sex. That doesn't mean that my client did it. But thank God for this reporter named Olivia from KGET who had a recording of him saying, of him admitting all of the brutal things that he did to her and saying that he just saw an opportunity to mess with his wife because Yvette looked like his wife. Imagine the pain the family felt 
con- for constantly f- over years, years of going to the courthouse and having to hear your loved one's name be thrown in the dirt and she did nothing wrong. So her killer, Jamie Osuna, decided to plead guilty, which made him get life sentence, but not the death penalty. But Yvette's family was so exhausted. I would be too. Six years is a long time. They were so exhausted from going back and forth to court and having to relive this horrible time that they were like, okay, that's fine. A life sentence. As long as he doesn't ever get out again, we don't care about the death penalty. With Yvette's birthday coming up, Yvette's sister requested that Jamie Osuna be sentenced on Yvette's birthday. And they did make that happen. So the family felt like there was closure. They felt relieved knowing that Jamie will never hurt somebody else again. So they thought. But there's more to that story. But imagine how Yvette's children feel. You know, they had so much hope that their mom would come back for them. Their mom would get their life together and come back. And now she's never coming back. All because my mom looked like your wife. There's more to that story. Her daughter says she can't even go into nail salons without seeing mothers and daughters picking out polish and bonding with each other. It makes her very sad and she runs out of the salon. She envies girls with mothers. She forgot what her mother smells like. She forgot what her her mother sounds like. All these children will have to be put through counseling. It was bad enough they started out without their mother, but now it's just like, it's no hope. These babies still have to have weddings, graduations, sports events. They have to have babies and they have to do all this without their mother. Have you, have y'all ever thought like, what makes a person so evil? Do you think it's from childhood, like a childhood trauma Or are they born like that? Is it like genetics? So click right here to watch Jamie Osuna. I break down his childhood and we're going to see what made him act the way that he acted. What made him so evil? Or you could click right here to subscribe to this channel so that you never miss another video. Post notification goes to... Thank you so much for having your post notifications on. Shout out to you for having the best comment. I love you and I will see you guys in the next month. Bye.